That's our audio. Now you speak a bit. Uh. Looks good. It's all level. <laughs> all right, I guess we get our going. Wait, is it already starting? <laughs> <laughs> you can see it recording. You fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I always assume that you, like, start with fucking... Never mind. Anyway, welcome to the 13th episode of the MD cast. 13th episode. I don't know how else to say this, but Tyler's dead still. Yeah. His we, last um... words were a lie. He told us that he would be back next week, but... After trying to wake him up with multiple dead raccoons and even some skunks, he uh, he's not back yet. Yeah, we think we're going to need to scour the neighborhood, find a few more. I mean, if worse comes to worse, we'll have to throw in a few fucking squirrels. And Jesus, you don't want you don't want to get involved with squirrels. It gets a little uh, nutty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- things can go real south. They get real hairy. Fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, uh, this time uh, we have another one of my dearly beloved co-workers with us that graciously graced us with his uh, his presence. This Good is grace. Yes, this is Conrad. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing superb. I'm doing okay. Terrific. So. 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 I thought up some topics oh boy they're he's all, the only one <laughs> they're all pretty shit but i mainly came up with most of them this morning i'm sure we'll make do um i had a weird dream last night again oh boy and this one took place in a fucking a denny's again as well i don't know why <laughs> but all my weird ones I like always... in the denny's or the parking lot the parking lot of denny's as well as inside the denny's oh we got a double feature double creature feature <laughs> <laughs> but anyway I was I was at a Denny's. I'm not going back to just why they could be in the Denny's. I think it's because one time I took a girl there, and um, when we when we ordered, it took them like a half hour to bring out our food, and then it it looked like they just cracked an egg on the plate. <laughs> a bit of your soul forever lingers angrily in that parking lot. <laughs> I didn't eat it, and neither did the girl. Here's but a question for you though: Why'd you bring a girl to Denny's? I don't know. It Her wasn't. Name it was wasn't. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, it, it wasn't a girl I was trying to date. It was just I was hungover. She was hungover. Let's get breakfast. Uh, okay. Well, that's Let's reasonable. go get some Denny's. And I said, "What about breakfast at Denny's?" <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, me, my mom, and my dad were at the Denny's, and we get out of the car, and then we go in and order. They sit down, and I say, "Oh shit." We didn't lock the car, so I go outside, and then there's three, <laughs> there's three like elderly women that have broken into the car, and they're all kind of rummaging through everything. And I go out there and I say, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> and then two of them scurry away, and then the other one she pulls out a knife and tries to stab me. <laughs> but I grab the knife, and I, I kung fu twist it out of her hand, and then I take my my phone back, which somehow got left in there. And then I noticed that another one had, like, a billfold of, like, $2,000. So I run over and I grab it out of her hand. And then I go back inside and I slam the money on the table in front of my parents. And <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, how did that happen? And then I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't lock the car again. And I go outside. And the car's gone, but it didn't seem to bother me because in its place was a giant jungle gym. With all oh, of our yeah. stuff just kind of locked in a little cage on the top. But there was a guy with a bone saw up there trying to, trying to cut open the lock. So. This sounds like one of those dumb hypotheticals, like the trolley. Okay, so there's a jungle gym. Your most prized possessions are locked in the top, but there's a man trying to saw his way in. What do? <laughs> what do? Well, I tell you what I do. I went up there, and I kind of snuck up behind him, and I just lightly grabbed his leg, and then I twisted and I ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And he started screaming, but he stood up with the one leg like a Terminator, and he started swinging the, the saw at me. You should have picked up, like, the stump of his leg and started <laughs> trying to club him with it. Hit him with it. But yeah, that was... That was strange dream. You see, I'm just picturing this, like, old lady trying to do, like, this fast leg shuffle away, and you just angrily walk up and grab which is a massive fold of bills and slap her with it. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You guys have any strange dreams recently? Uh-huh, that would require sleep. True, uh, honestly. College life. Yes, the college life. It is not kind. But I got a break. 
as soon as Monday passes and I fail my work. Lovely. You know, as you do. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> not not <me>. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to college. You yeah, did. for good reason. <laughs> uh, other one. Um, have you ever had like some really bad slips of the tongues, where like you meant to say all the something? Time. Okay, what's a very extreme case? Um, it's hard to think of them. There are some. There are a lot of just like really dumb ones where you say something really stupid without thinking about it. But extreme cases, I'm not sure because I don't talk. I don't put myself in many cases where a slip of the tongue could be extreme. You got any, Conrad? Honestly, not that I can think of. Any time like my tongue slips, it usually just like ends me trying to like stutter my way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me, Kyle. Do you do you remember when you said like, what if every time you stuttered, you made the opening sound to Highway to the like <laughs> Highway to the Danger Zone? <laughs> every time, every time you stutter, because it's like um, uh, it's that thing you do where you you start talking, but then you kind of flub your speech, so you just kind of go that 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 that, but. Yeah. You um, but every time you did that, you did the opening just guitar sound to Highway to the Danger Zone. That like, like, <laughs> so you're you're talking, you flub your speech. Uh, so I have uh, have. <laughs> <laughs> Three people would ever just catch on to that and then start singing Highway to the Danger Zone. That would board. make that would make things a lot less awkward if they did. For sure. Honestly, the world would be a better place if everyone was well versed in spontaneous musicals. <laughs> like, just imagine that you you fuck something up. It's like those videos where people like trip or something, and they instead of recovering, they like do a push up or something, and then you see a bunch of people come out of nowhere and they start counting like one, two, yeah. except it's. Just a, it's just a high school musical where you fuck up your speech and you start singing in song and everyone just jumps up on tables and starts dancing. What if everybody had a trademark theme song every time they entered a room? And it's Highway to the Danger No, it's zone. it's different for everyone. Not everybody is just going to walk in a room. <laughs> You're just going to hear, like, Highway to the Danger Zone looping, like, ten times over each other. You see... Ah, wait, run it! <laughs> It, it's all fun and games until that starts playing while you're on the highway. <laughs> it's like you're sitting there in traffic just waiting for it to go by. And it's audible enough through, like, people's cars and everything so that someone passes you going, like, a buck forty and you just you just look to the side of your window it's like ah and then it just goes by you just you're sitting there you're in traffic waiting and you start you hear a very muffled highway to the danger zone in the back and you're like oh shit and you look behind you and you see that's like, a massive like 18 wheeler barrel <laughs> oh that would be amazing take your fucking keys off I haven't even fucking jingle jangled them. Yes, you have. I can hear it. Well, I'll hear it more tomorrow. I don't need to hear it because fucking I'm deaf. Well, I'm not. Well, I don't think the rest of the audience. Stick some pencils in your ears, dumb nut. This is an easy solution. Get with the program. Get with the program. Deafen yourself, idiot. (laughs) Oh. Uh, What was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, Bad slips of the tongue. I remember back when I still played Siege with um, all of our American buddies. I think you were there, but I'm not too sure. Um, they were talking about Valk, the uh, the one character that has all the cams and shit. And they were like, oh, why is her face so fucked up? And they, they were like, yeah, what's wrong with her face? And I was very drunk at the time. <laughs> As always. Yeah, if I play Siege, I'm hammered. But I, I meant to say, my dick's not in her mouth. But I just loudly said, her dick's not in my mouth. (laughs) And a solid second passed before everybody, including myself, was like, oh, wait a minute. You always gotta play those off. So is Valka trapped then? Or I mean, mayhaps. she's probably just a man. You can't <laughs> confirm anything until you've seen it. That's true. You With gotta, anyone. You gotta have a very powerful trap sense. Is there a way you can, uh, like, practice your trap sense? You know, oh, absolutely. Be more exposed harrowing. to it. Oh, no. <laughs> you gotta put yourself in the firing line. Like the gay bar, or like no, <laughs> no. Well, okay, but that's that, gonna be that like a sensory, sensory overload of not just traps. You're gonna have bears like trying to rip your fucking. Spine and how are out. you to know that those bears don't have vaginas? You can't trust anyone. Well, you never know. 
You gotta you gotta be in a controlled environment. Your wife of thirteen years? She has a dick, unless you can confirm it. <laughs> Well, if it's for 13 years, I hope you can confirm it. You never know. When, when you're she out of work... She took a vow of celibacy. Well, that's just fucking gay. That's just sad. <laughs> yeah. Why would you marry it? <laughs> Either that or she wears a chastity cage. That should have been a tip-off, but, you know, you just wanted to believe. That was just, like, always tucking, like, very, like, convincing. Tucking. <laughs> you, you have a wife of 13 years, and you just never realized it was Buffalo Bill. She only likes oh, anal. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, your wife fucking enters the room. Would you fuck me? <laughs> I would fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go marry you? Why don't you go marry you? Okay. <laughs> Why'd she leave me? <laughs> she says she doesn't want kids. She says that she literally can't have any. Maybe she's taking literally too, too, too literally. Maybe. What? If, cause that's an that's an old uh, fucking you know dad joke or dad comments like, well, if you like whatever so much, why don't you go marry it? People will do that now. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I saw an article a few years ago. It's like some woman in like the states married a fucking bridge or something like that. Like I don't know <laughs> how that works. Bro, Mothman's gonna just storm that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> this is my bridge. <laughs> God. I remember, like, you know, the old stories of, like, the Asian man who married his, uh, his waifu from a 3DS game or something like that, and had a whole wedding and everything. Like, uh, like, let's... Some people take the whole waifu thing too seriously. Like, didn't, didn't the one studio get burnt down because the Yo, one, Annie. the one guy, he found out that his wife, who wasn't a virgin before, and that she wasn't a virgin anymore. Is that why that happened? It's supposedly why, so he burnt down oh the whole fucking God. building. Is there any hope left for humanity? No, Bro. there's not. <laughs> now you forever hold the knowledge with you that the people who made Lucky Star burnt in a fire. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I cook sausage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no fuck <laughs> okay next topic um i just titled this one sexual awakening but it's a lot more descriptive <laughs> than that okay so. off to a strong start do you guys have a fetish or something that you really like that you can trace back to the beginning like you know exactly what caused it um I'm trying to think of some, like, really funny Freudian thing, but I, no, it's not coming to me. Um, it's hard to, hard to say. Okay, I'll go, I'll go <laughs> with mine then. Yeah. I'll get the ball yours. rolling on this one. So, I remember back when it was, like, the birds and the bees talk. I already had the, the talk, but, like, I was still, eh, sex is stupid. Sex I'd rather, is gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather play Lego Star Wars. Hell yeah. So I did. But then, for some reason, my my aunt came over. Now, don't don't think like that. <laughs> I'm thinking like that. My aunt came over with a little booklet that was like, this, this is shit kids should read about for, like, safe sex and whatnot, and, like, what puberty is and what's going on with their bodies. And she gave it to my parents, and my parents were like, oh, okay. So they gave it to me and said, you can read this if you feel like it. So... I was just chilling in my room, and then I look over at the booklet, and it has, like, a bunch of cute green aliens, and they're like, this is about sex and shit. So I start flipping through it, and it's like, this is... This is what fucking masturbation is and whatnot. And then... And thus, my fetish for masturbation was born. <laughs> <laughs> but I flip over to one page, and it's just, like... A thick green alien doing a pouty face with her titties out. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I look at it, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, bro. So is this just, like, segueing into you, like, having a fetish for, like, Xeno girls or something? Or? Like, anything differently colored other than human colors. <laughs> like, blue, <laughs> green, aliens and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I stopped looking. I started looking differently at Alice Akira from Star Wars. I started looking differently at fucking Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, suddenly the Star Wars thing gets all gets put into perspective. And I'm like, <laughs> Honestly, all of mine are like fairly later on in development because it's like 
I was never interested in a lot of that stuff for a while, and then it became a fucking degenerate later on. A but coomer. Aside, <laughs> coomer. I am the coomer. I'm gonna kill you. Oh. <laughs> 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 but uh no i'm actually pretty vanilla for the most part and then everything else just kind of developed later on and that's why i'm a horrible person now uh yeah you either dip your toes in early or you fall in later <laughs> <laughs> although that does remind me of um of the pitiful excuse for a sex ed class we had in grade five <laughs> And I remember I was, um, did that, uh... My fucking teacher got a boner during ours. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Fucking... Like, how? What I don't know, he was just talking, and then my one friend looked over and said, Yo, he's got a fucking chub. <laughs> and, then, no. and then And then he started crossing his legs and rocking back and forth, and then he sat down at his desk after. <laughs> oh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, fucking the other Kyle, um... I remember uh, his uh, his mom was a nurse, but you know, so he kind of knew these things, and he was pretty confident in his knowledge about it. And so I just remember when uh, the nurses who were there instructing the sex ed class, and they're like, "So, uh, does anyone know, you know, the name of the male genitalia?" And he just sits there. Why, yes, that would be the penis. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. And it, it, of course, it was like a fifth grade sex ed class, so everyone starts laughing. Well, been, <laughs> yeah. And he just sits there and gets kind of offended. It's like, come on, guys, that's what it's actually called <laughs> the penis. Do you know what a clitoris is? <laughs> no, but it sounds disgusting. <laughs> Like, uh, I, like, I always remember having those, like, topics in, like, elementary school and stuff, and it's just, like, when the teacher would say, like, oh, this is the penis, and, like, this is the vagina, and then, like, all the kids would start laughing and stuff. I don't know why, like, they always found that funny. It was just, like... Kids it, find a lot of stupid shit funny. Yeah. I remember in my grade five class, we we saw... I don't know why, but they showed us the video of the, Lin, the Lindenberg, or that big... Like, like, burning mob. down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Hindenburg. yeah, the Hindenburg burning down, and like the guy was like, "Oh, the humanity!" and everyone was fucking <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, the humanity! And they also exactly. showed us fucking videos of 9/11 and people jumping out of buildings and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? And and I was just kind of sitting there like, "What the fuck? Why? Why are they showing us this?" And other kids were like, "Ah ha ha ha!" <laughs> For like what? My school is fucked. They, I remember in grade two, they showed us a video of a kid being birthed. That's, That's weird. Was was your school a public school? Yes, it was. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if like Catholics, pu- like elementary schools and public elementary schools. Kids are, are not born. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I immaculately conceived <laughs> by our dear Lord. By our dear Lord, he sends a. What the fuck are they? What, what are those fucking a stork? A stork? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the stork. Yeah, the storks, bird. Yeah. They send storks down with children. And sometimes we shoot them down. That's how adoption works. <laughs> That's how abortion works. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you hit him with it. It's Doug Hunt. We need, we need the expert. He's on his way right now. <laughs> where is it? I'll shoot it down. Clint Eastwood right shows up with his rifle. <laughs> you feeling lucky, punk? Uh, I see that twinkle in the eye. You'll see the twinkle in the rifle. What the fuck we were talking about before? Um, uh, sex ed and sh- like. Although I do have another funny thing about the sex ed class. Uh, my other friend, um, I won't mention his name, he was uh, kind of a mama's boy. Uh, I remember, he, and he was, uh, he, he was he was a fairly innocent kind of mama's boy, and I remember they were talking, I guess there was some stuff on masturbation in the sex ed class, and he just sits there, he's like, huh, I guess I'll ask my mom about if I can masturbate. Oh, <laughs> oh no. And we just, we just pull him fucking... aside, and we're like, bro... Don't, Don't do that. <laughs> She'll pull him aside and fucking shove her thumbs in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever ask again. No. I'm sorry, Mom. You are forbidden. Don't let him. Don't make me get the plank. The, the Pope actually said that masturbation is no longer a sin now. Recently. Yeah, wasn't it like a whole thing where the Pope says a lot of shit that previously was not okay? He's like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, he's trying to like appeal the gays to the youth. Are okay now. And yeah, he's whatever. the cool Pope. He's he's the cool Uncle Pope. Yeah. He's here like, hey kids, feel free to jerk the fuck off. 
How do you do, fellow youths? <laughs> <laughs> I too like jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> I too jerk off, but only in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Sitting on his golden throne, busting a holy nut. I take off the Pope hat just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I know God is watching. I turn around all the pictures of Jesus in my in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Sex ed's weird. Yeah, it's always a very awkward topic. I remember yeah. one of my one of my teachers was like, "Okay, is there any questions?" And they put questions in a hat of all things, so that it was an. We did that once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> we too put questions in a hat. <laughs> we are more similar than you may think. But. One of them was, what does cum taste like? And then the class. Oh my god, I remember someone did that in my class as well! Why is that always so fucking popular with <laughs> that shit? But, of course, the class host stands up and she says, I think that it tastes salty. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck? I remember one uh, question that I put in one of those hats. Uh, my question was like, you know, I'm a young kid at a point, and I'm like, so like... What was the first discovery of sex? And so the teacher, like, looks at it, reads it, and he sits there thinking for a sec, like, who the fuck asked this kind of question? Uh, he knew it was me because he had told beforehand, he's like, don't ask any stupid fucking questions because I know what your handwriting looks like, you numbnuts. And, uh, and he just, he looks at it, he's like, uh, Kyle. Kyle like, glances <laughs> over at you. Like, he, kinda, he, he looks at it and he just he thinks for a second, he's like, well, uh... I don't know, I imagine they just watched some animals do it or something. And I'm sitting there like, bro, are they watching animals fuck? Did they not try and fuck the animals too? Hmm. More questions are popping into my head as we speak. I am being less and less educated as we go. Yeah, that was that was a fun time. God. I can't remember what question I asked. I, I also asked a stupid question. I didn't understand that milk would only come out of the titties if you... If if the girl was pregnant or recently pregnant, so I I said if you if you suck on a girl's nipple, will milk come out all the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This is incorrect. He just asked the next question. Can we not just put women in farms? <laughs> and then you probably get fucking arrested. Can we not put women in farm? Can we not just farm women for their milk? Apparently that's becoming more of a popular thing with like uh I wanna say like bodybuilders, but like oh, fit, yeah, fitness, actual like, breast milk. Yeah, like drinking breast milk's actually like better for you than like cow's milk and stuff. I mean I'm not surprised. Breast milk is designed for humans. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Fair enough. Apparently milk isn't very good for you after a certain age. Really? Yeah, cuz you Is it because you only your really bones need rebel? It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they get too strong and they rip out of you. Oh no. Yeah. That's why all the graves are filled with skeletons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they rebel against the skin that holds them. <laughs> the flesh will not bind me. That's why they put them in a box. You yes, put them in a so casket, you bury them. You don't want to deal with the skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like you were saying, I think it was like bone growth stops at like somewhere in like early 20s. So it's like milk kind of becomes... Obsolete. Yeah. Oh shit, I like milk. Yeah, I mean, I still mean, drink it, but like... It don't will... drink too much of it or else you will develop kidney stones. That is that like, really a thing that can happen from it? Yeah. It is, but it's like if you drink plenty of water, like you should be fine anyway. Like, as well uh, as too much red meat. I mean my my worst red fear meat, really? Well, yeah, is it's it's also filled with other shit that causes fucking kidney I know stones. It's more for like heart problems and stuff. Yeah. I, I couldn't that. care less about heart problems. <laughs> <laughs> Got enough as it is, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I remember a friend of mine, um, uh, she developed kidney stones and was going through hell for that. And I'm sitting there like, now what are the prime causes of kidney stones? Rampant alcoholism. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's on. And I remember talking to her. And I, I bring this up to her and she's like, yeah, I, I, I considered that. So I, I am going to, uh, so I'm going to stop drinking. And then there was a long pause. <laughs> As much as I do, <laughs> and everyone in that uh, in that chat was like, "Ah, I was waiting for that part." <laughs> if I ever have to pa pass a kidney stone, I'm just gonna fucking kill myself. That's it. I'm done. 
Honestly, your life, life, life might as well be over. Like, that's... <laughs> Got a coworker of ours that's like passed the kidney stone. I want to say like, doesn't he pass one like every two years? I, is that, that what he said? Or no, like, two every year. Two every year. Uh, and it was like, like five, uh, it was five last year because he actually cut down on all the milk that he drank and all the red meat. Because doesn't he, he buys a fucking T-bone steak every week? Oh yeah, and he he like, says oh, that he had a steak he goes through night. a bag of milk every day too. That's Ugh. that's a lot of milk. That is a lot of milk. Like no wonder you're passing fucking kidney stones, dude. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> holy moly! And then like you see him the next day, he's just like, oh, it was up at three a.m. Like eyes are like bloodshot, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, I was passing a kidney stone, and like, he's got a urethra Jesus. the size of his pinky. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Can shoot a golf ball through a garden hose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do not. I wonder want if he to tries to sell them online, like fucking. You think people buy that shit online? I, so, I guess. I mean, there's only if they're things. famous. Yeah, because yeah. who was the famous person who sold his kidney stone? Um, fuck. Was that Shatner? I almost... Yeah, it was William Shatner. He really just sold a kidney stone. Online. Yeah, yep. he sold his own kidney stone. How much did it go for? And for a very hefty price. Like it, tens, thousands, thousands, hundreds, thousands. Like. I can't remember, but I know that it was, it was worth a lot more than it should have been. But it was still reasonably priced since it came from him. <laughs> like I, this that's just the very broad way that I can put it. <laughs> because I remember seeing it, and I'm like, huh, it's very humble price for such a, <laughs> such a famous man, I suppose. What is the weirdest thing you would buy, from? a like famous person that you actually like like or something honestly a signature i don't really care that much for famous people yeah honestly don't care much for famous people either but like maybe like something they used in like a movie set like a prop or like something that like was actually, yeah that they like got as a gift after they finished filming or something like mm. i don't know by the Bill and Ted phone booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there the the phone. I think it was the Bill and Ted one, but it was um they they held they held a contest for that one, uh, a contest, and the winner would get it. And some some kid did win it. This was way back when. This kid's probably older now. How much you want a Betty Fox in that phone booth? <laughs> oh, I fucking hope not. He takes <laughs> he takes girls to the Bill and Ted phone booth. It's like, <laughs> want to get totally radical? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Probably jerks off in it. Probably. <laughs> Fingering the fucking change hole. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up the receiver. Totally tubular. <laughs> Radical! Thinking that's in the coin slot then. <laughs> <laughs> he brings a donut in there and fucks it. <laughs> Time for a little change. <laughs> I like it glazed. That was awful. <laughs> Uh, do you still have those donuts from last week? No, I ate them. Damn. Why, well, you uh, looking to have some fun with it? Or? Uh, no, I was looking <laughs> to eat it, but, you know. You're fucking pretty stale. I mean, a donut's a donut, man. Yeah, true enough. There's only one kind of donut I will I will deny. What's that? <laughs> the rear kind. Uh. <laughs> Cease. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, moving on. No more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no donuts. <laughs> no donuts. Anyway, Sam brought donuts last time. He was a very kind boy. Yeah, you could have had some if you were here. <laughs> true, true. I look like a bad person now for not bringing anything then. No, it's uh, I mean, you're not supposed to bring anything. <laughs> He was the exception. Yes. I mean, he's always doing nice things. A very people, kind so. boy. Oh, nice things. What a man. This is the Sam Appreciation episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Appreciation episode. <laughs> he's not here right now, but God bless him. <laughs> God bless that man. Better host than Tyler. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he's only been dead for two weeks. <laughs> The body's not even cold yet. <laughs> too soon, man, too soon. Ah, don't worry, we'll bring him back eventually. When do you deem is too soon? Fuck, man, I've made fucking real, like, jokes about dead people. You like, have? I was there for a few of them. <laughs> yeah. I laughed at them because I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, I we're mean, both pieces of shit. I remember the week Prince died, there were memes out about it, and I thought they were funny. Uh, I, I don't know. I say, like, wait, maybe... Maybe a week, mm -hmm. may, maybe two for good measure, but it's like, 
I am fine with dark humor and making making light of very heavy situations. So I'm all for it's being um, funny. It's just the only thing I ever, you know, caveat I ever add to that is know who is listening because that's always something yeah. I always find an issue. Because so, there are people who are like, you can joke about whatever you want, do whatever you want. There are people who are like, no, you shouldn't because it's not cool. Uh, but I feel what a lot of people don't bother to think about is who's hearing the joke, you know? Exactly. If, I, if I'm if i a stand-up comedian, I feel I can go up and make the jokes because you're paying to come listen to my jokes and you should theoretically know what I'm like. But mm-hmm. if I just walk into a room of people who knew someone and then I joke about his about how it was really funny how his head was on the other side of the room <laughs> that's probably in poor taste mm-hmm. I think it's also it also comes from a, cer- a certain standpoint as well because I'm one of those people that can't really take a lot of situations seriously as well so I'll have to make a joke about something or make mm-hmm. light of it because well, that's, that's just how a lot of people are yeah it's it's like a way of dealing with like it's a good coping mechanism stuff, right? yeah exactly yeah. It's like just joking around with it and having a laugh. Having a little lark. Ho ho ho. Hee hoo hoo. Look at his head. <laughs> Look at how it's on the other side of the room. Whoa! <laughs> it's the headless horseman. <laughs> but he's got no horse. But also. Just can't no believe JFK's head just did that, man. Like, <laughs> holy. Holy shit, that's a cool magic trick. I didn't know heads did that. <laughs> <laughs> You believe in JFK? Yeah, man. Wasn't no, even real. I believe that was a hologram. Shooter. <laughs> it was a hologram. Then what was what was the, who, like what was the wife trying to put back like in the hologram? Like was... her coochie fell off. Her coochie. <laughs> fell off. <laughs> oh shit! Did you see they're releasing? It startled her so much. <laughs> Did you see they're releasing Funko Pops of American presidents? Oh no! And they've got one of JFK. Yes. And I found it really missing. funny to put emphasis on the pop. <laughs> how That's long good. how long will it be before someone gets one of him and they just like carve a side out of his head and just <laughs> fill it with fucking jelly and the shit the second it's available that's gonna happen yeah for sure honestly <laughs> this is how doomers perceive reality <laughs> uh, there are two types of doomers those who say it's not worth it and those who say this is totally worth it <laughs> wait wouldn't that just make them coomers uh, only if they come in the hole they make. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I still fuck JFK. <laughs> I'm gonna coom. <laughs> Mr. President, get down. <laughs> just imagine <laughs> some some guy running from the crowd just... <gasps> <laughs> Bro, imagine just like elaborate people. You know, some people have their role play fantasies or whatever. I just imagine some elaborate three-person role play where there's someone who's supposed to be like a presidential figure and then someone stands up in the crowd holding their dick and they're like, I'm gonna shoot! <laughs> and someone has to run and jump in front of it. Get down, Mr. President! Oh, no. <laughs> and then they tackle him. <laughs> Do you remember when the guy threw shoes at Bush? Yeah, didn't yeah. they, like, build a statue in, for that guy or something in, like, Did the Middle they? East? I think so. I don't know. Like, maybe you look it up on the computer or your phone or something. Or maybe I'll look it up. Where did my phone go? Your phone is on the fucking couch. What if there's role play for that guy? <laughs> what kind He's of throwing weird... throwing dildos at his He's girlfriend? A... <laughs> what kind of weird role play do you think actually exists? Like... I remember I saw a 4chan thread of a guy that bought a hooker and... He had a Bane mask on, and he just kept telling her to lie on the bed and say, you're a pretty big guy. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see the porn parody of Bane with a girlfriend? I no. fucking did! <laughs> <laughs> it was, um... It, it's, a, it's a dude dressed as Bane from the, the newest iteration of Bane from the modern Batman movies. Wasn't it called... Wasn't it called The Memer? I'm not sure. I think it was called The Memer. But I just remember he, like, has his girlfriend who's just normal porn star, brings her home to his parents. His parents are wearing Bane masks as well. They get to his bedroom, he whips out his dick, and it's wearing a little Bane mask. (laughs) (laughs) You're a pretty big guy. Oh, no. 
Uh, yeah, apparently they did actually build a, a monument to Bush shoe throwing shrine or shines at Iraqi orphanage. What is it? Like? It's just a big like bronze shoe. Oh, no. <laughs> a big bronze shoe. <laughs> it is the shoe. Yeah. Holy <laughs> fuck! <laughs> Look at that. I was really hoping that it would be like the uh, the frisbee throwing like renaissance statue and it would just be him with the shoe in his hand <laughs> <laughs> i can just imagine like one of those famous old statues of someone in like an action pose but he's just got a shoe <laughs> it's just some dude uh, uh. it's like a bunch of those like that classic statue of like the american guys all like trying to put up the flag except oh. they were all just like holding shoes <laughs> they're holding his shoe yeah. together oh uh. i saw it a pride pride parade they recreated that or, no, this might have been a meme for a pride parade. I don't know if it was actually at a pride parade, but they had a bunch of a bunch of guys in in rainbow suits shoving the flagpole up a guy's ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bro, what if? Because they make statues of all sorts of things. The dog, like Hachiko or whatever. They made a statue of him. Made a statue of Shoe Man. What if they made a statue of Tumbles the Stair Drag? <laughs> <laughs> It's just like one of those modern art pieces where it's like on a stairwell falling down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a square stairwell that's infinite. He falls How down much it. does it cost to put a statue in? I guess depends. Like know. depends what it's made of, right? And I guess it's like the artist, I guess, is like what you're commissioning for it. Could we commission a tumbles the stair dragon statue? <laughs> like a like a carved out of like a wooden log or yeah. something. Like I guess that would be the cheapest we could get. That's a solid idea. We should start a Kickstarter. Help us. We do not have a tumbles the stair dragon statue. We would like to have a tumbles the stair dragon statue. Here's the thing, right? All you gotta do is get the com- the furry community on board, and you're back. <laughs> Just a Kickstarter for it, because like, uh, I talk to a lot of uh, I talk to a lot of artists and shit. Apparently, the furry community they are willing to shell out big bucks. Oh, I believe it. If honestly. they can afford a fucking fur suit, they can afford anything. Yeah. So all you gotta do is get the furries into it. It's like we're gonna commemorate the brave warrior of the staircase tumbles. <laughs> we we want to make this wonderful wooden statue, but we need your help. And they're gonna fucking flock to it, <laughs> like birds, but dogs. Like, no, there would be birds in the furry community. Probably, avians. Yeah, avians, I think they so. are called. I'm sure you get a little bit of everything. Fucking Lizards, fucking birds. Yeah, but then you get infighting between the scalies and the furries. <laughs> <laughs> which race, which species is better? Race war now! Race war now! <laughs> race <laughs> Bro, that could... Imagine if that actually happened, though. Imagine a, race, a civil a race war. A furry race war. <laughs> at, like, a convention at, like, the Hilton Hotel or something. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, rainforest. <laughs> they just... They just break into these these uh, these different sides and factions of scalies, furries, then you got avians, and they're just the bomber <laughs> unit. And they sit in the rafters and try to shit, shit on people. They you throw their you. fucking diapers. <laughs> 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 the fucking diaper cavalry. <laughs> You've got other cavalry coming in, they're riding on other first. They're <laughs> riding on horses. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> 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 They're just slapping each other with giant fucking dragon giant dildos. Dra- <laughs> fucking bad dragon dildos. Just knocking each other out cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that would be a memory. Memory and a half. <laughs> what, what um, were you doing in 2020, Grandpa? <laughs> I was. I fought in the Great Furry War at Hilton Hotel, I tell you. I fought Fang and Paw. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those fucking scalies. <laughs> Great Grandpa, that's 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 illegal to say now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them for what they were. Just get a knock on the door. There's like scalies dressed up as like SS uniforms. It's the fucking <laughs> scaly Gestapo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what turn of events would cause it to be furries? Furries becoming the elite race. 
<laughs> the elites. <laughs> it's just like furries becoming like the one percent. Yeah. And then just like owning uh, mass media, and then just like turning eventually turning everyone into furries. My God. Well, at least the iron fist you'll be under is fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> God, um, you fucking piss me off. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Would these furries be, like, ruling the world with, like, a fascist kind of government or, like, a communist kind of, like, government? What do you it would think? definitely be communist, I think. Yeah, communism is kind of taking that... Coming that coming it's around becoming again. a popular, <laughs> yeah. Route. So I bet there'd be a lot of communist furries. Yeah, you know, like the diaper rashes for everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, gotta gotta be red. Better better red. <laughs> ooh ooh! Notice you don't like working. Gulag it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't imagine a furry gulag. That sounds like <laughs> a furry like gulag. A, hell, a hellscape. <laughs> That is my own personal hell now. <laughs> a goop hog. <laughs> a new woo pog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just imagine all the fucking furry guards standing around and they beat you over the head. <laughs> With what drank and dildos instead of nice <laughs> <laughs> Notice his uprising, ooh woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Drops the soap. <laughs> <laughs> you don't drop the soap in furry gulags. There are no soap. <laughs> <laughs> you sit in your fursuit and you so- stew. <laughs> oh no! It's a soupy fucking st- fursuit. <laughs> Those things gotta get warm. Oh yeah, they probably get pretty fucking disgusting. God, I can't imagine being in one of those. Imagine the smell coming Ugh. from a furry con. I mean, I, I heard uh, Comic Cons can get pretty bad for like BO and stuff. It oh, was yeah. kinda kind of smelly going through some of the some of the areas yeah like yeah. the uh what do you call it like the booths yeah yeah and then it there was, was one guy that walked by he wasn't wearing a hat or anything but he had the rest of a suit that was a skunk uh, was that the one in this city yeah yeah okay i forgot to take down the fucking clock fucking clock just throw a hammer at it <laughs> That fucking bird clock. Fucking bird. Birds everywhere in my life, I swear. Better take that down before the furry uprising. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like avians around these parts. The scalies won't like that. You see, I bet the avians would probably be like the real hardcore ones, and if they were in power, that you gotta like certify that you are a proper uh, a proper avian, and it'll be like a Salem witch trial or whatever. <laughs> Not like in Cloaca? What are you, a normie? They, they fucking take you up to a really high building. You're an avian, right? Learn to fly. <laughs> Holy fuck, it is communism. <laughs> God. I don't want a world ro- ruled by furries. <laughs> This is the worst possible reality. You best start believing in furry communism. You're in one. <laughs> God, I can imagine furries storming the fucking beaches of Normandy with hammers and sickles. Uh, it's just like the beginning scene of Private Ryan, Saving Private Ryan, where it's like a guy gets his arm blown off and he's just, he's just like, walking like, around <laughs> with his arm. It's just a furry. Yeah. His regular arm still there. His just arm for a suit yeah, arm his fell off. Suit fell off. <laughs> <laughs> he ripped his fursuit so he's out. He's looking for like a guy to sew it back on. All you hear is really high pitched ringing. <laughs> 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 but it's just someone blowing a dog whistle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everyone can hear it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is this is why we got to rebel against the furries. I'll be back. I'm gonna go and get more mix. Okay. That's probably for the best. I'm gonna need something stronger for this one. Ah, come on. Just drink it straight. Ugh. We've done that before. That's a bad idea. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Clearly, you haven't been around long enough. Yeah, clearly. Uh, although to be fair, when discussing furries, the concept of straight gets blurred. (laughs) (laughs) It just turns into, like... The abyss, just like no one can see down into the straight zone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows what straight is. Yeah. Uh, I, I am, all, I am just reminded of that one furry that was like, uh, he had a fur suit that was colored like the, um, 
the that one flag, the Confederate flag. Oh, really? The Confederate yeah. furry. A Confederate <laughs> furry. Yeah. That's not uncommon. You see a lot of furries with pictures of the Confederate flag in the background. <laughs> like, have you ever have you ever seen all the all the furries on K on 4chan? No, but what format or uh, what thread is K? Weapons. K is weapons. weapons. There's there are furries on weapon threads. Yeah, you'll you, there's like there's furries of, on every thread. <laughs> there's furries true, on every thread. True. Pour me one of those while you're at it. We'll do. We'll do. So I gotta uh, say, I don't think pole, but I mean pole. Everyone pole's knows its pole. own breed of. And, yeah, because they also call out the nickname for the browsers of K is the Commandos. Commandos. It's spelled with a K, but you'll see, like, entire images of just entire groups of people armed to the teeth in fursuits. It's like, furries of K. Come and get them, Obama! (laughs) Man, I'd be fucking scared of, like, armed furries, like, flying Confederate flags. I mean... It's probably easy enough to hide some, you know, Kevlar under there. (laughs) Get a Kevlar fursuit. fursuit. Fuck sakes. (laughs) (laughs) And then, and then, here, here's how it works. The um, the furries are kind of modern military because they've got Kevlar fursuits, but the scalies, right? They wear scale mail. They're, they they wield blades. <laughs> just They're all medieval knights. sort of race. What about avians? Would they like just be like? Avians would have to be like some kind of air supremacy. They would all be pilots. <laughs> Either that, or they just throw things at you. <laughs> <laughs> just always sitting up in a tree, like. Yes. Wait, <laughs> They're in the tree. <laughs> Wasn't I? Don't remember if if I'm getting this right, but wasn't there an entire faction in Fallout New Vegas called the Boomers? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> the Boomers, because they were fucking po- they were they were in the fucking airfield. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking Boomers. <laughs> I actually never thought about that. That's a lot more funny to me than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can't allow you into our airfield. You're not one of us. <laughs> you you damn zoomer. <laughs> Come back after you ruin the economy. <laughs> Come back after you found some white monster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bro, I was in my class. Um, it was like early classes on a Thursday, and I'm sitting there making puns because I'm just sitting there so fucking tired. And I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like delusional in a sense. Yeah, pretty much. Like every Comic-Con we go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm sitting there and I'm just... We were talking in the Discord and there, one of the dudes who's talking is like right in front of me. Yeah. And he's drinking a monster. He's got the white monster. Yeah. And uh, I'm making I'm making puns. And he's like, man, this guy's on top of it. He, he's got all the puns. He's got all the jokes. And I was, I was so close to sitting there. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, as a reward, turn around and give me that boomer juice. <laughs> it would have been great because I bet he would have. <laughs> uh, I could have used it too. <laughs> I was fucking dying in there. Sam comes in every every now and again with a with a monster. He never, does he? Ever, he never gets the white one though, does he? He got one once, and we called him a boomer, and he said that he didn't know what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> he's very he's a very sheltered man, and and he's precious, and he needs to be protected. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There have been a number of times where I've wanted, where I've just been like, I should get a monster, partially to make a dumb meme, but also just because I need to stay fucking awake. But I haven't done it yet. One of these days. What was that one meme that I showed you, where it was like they turned a girl into a monster, like... She had a monster energy thing on her shirt, and she was trying to market it to a kid, and she said, <laughs> Want some monster, kid? Piss rocks out? <laughs> <laughs> Did you send that to me? I think I just showed you it at break at one point. Yeah, maybe. I, like, I vaguely remember something like that, but I honestly... Want some kidney stones, kid? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right. Fuck yeah. Hey, kid, want to taste some boomer juice and eat some kidney stones? Eat some kidney stones. You think anyone's ever tried to sell their kidney stones as meth? Yeah. Maybe. It's possible. You think anyone tried to eat their own kidney stones? Uh, Uh, probably. Maybe they like the crunch? (laughs) (laughs) You think there's, like, fetishes around, like, pissing out kidney stones? If it exists, somebody is turned on by it. I mean, there are are people who are like, oh, yeah, girl, period, (laughs) 
True, but true. Like, there's got to be someone who's like... Corn cares not where the blood flows from. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be someone... The blood God. There's got to be someone out there who's like, all right, if you got a kidney stone, I want that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking screaming in pain. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast once, but I read one Monster Girl manga not too long ago where it revolves around them going to essentially just different whorehouses and like they, they leave a review at, at them. But the main characters went to one where it was, like, just an egg-laying one. <laughs> and they, they were obviously not very into it because all that was coming up was, like, alligator girls. And they looked like actual lizards instead of, like, cute anime girls. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, like, this stocky-looking, weird-bodied penguin girl went up stage. And, like, they were so depraved and tired of just watching lizards and, like, <laughs> other other weird shit lay eggs that they were like, okay, maybe, maybe she's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> and she lays three eggs and everybody in the crowd's like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Giggle. It, it was a weird one. Yeah, have that you, sure sounds like it. Have you ever seen that post about combining all the monster Masume characters into one unhor- just horrible abomination? It's like an eldritch like, Just, like, creature. surgically make I, them horrible? I think I have. It was like... Because you've got, like, mermaid, spider, centaur, slime, and, slime, shit, yeah, and uh, darling, snake. and it was, like, some whole thing. It's, like, you take, um, you take the horse part from a centaur, you stick the, uh, you stick the spider half from the spider all, all where the neck is, <laughs> you put the fish tail onto the back of it, put the wings on the side, but you put the slime inside of it. So it controls the entire being, and then you sew it shut. That's so it becomes one shit. horrid abomination. That's fucking hellish. I've seen something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was horrible, but it was creative. I really liked Monster Masume, but one of the six mangas that I read today, it was the 14th one. And I didn't really like that one, because the main character gets sent to a farm, but it's a dairy farm. Mm-hmm. And all the all the girls there, well, all of the cattle there are, are women. <laughs> oh no! And it's just him milking them all for the entire almost two hundred pages. Jesus. And it got pretty hard to look at after a while. <laughs> it's one of those episodes. Not this again. <laughs> oh darn! Kind of explains why they haven't released a season or like animated a season two for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if it gets that depraved. It lost a lot of gas. Yeah, I, I could imagine. There's Kinda still some good moments, anyone. but a lot of bad ones too. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always hate that when uh, you get a manga that's real good early on, but then just loses steam. I remember... There was one I read. It was a horror manga called Scumbag Loser. That was kind of uh, it's kind of fucking weird. But it's just um, to give a brief uh, synopsis uh, of what the plot is. It's essentially some dude who's like bottom of the food chain, fat loser in high school kind of thing, and to and to basically uh, he, he's a scumbag and a scumbag loser. Yes, okay. but he doesn't want to be the biggest loser of the class. <laughs> So when the guy who is the biggest loser is like, hey, I got a girlfriend, he basically lies and says, oh, yeah, I've got a girlfriend, shows, like, a faked picture of her and says her name. But the thing is, she's been dead for, like, ten years. And then she shows up, and she's like, yeah, I'll go along with this, but, uh... What the fuck? You gotta... You gotta, you gotta do me a favor. And he's, he's like, what's that favor? Well, I happen to, uh, have an interest in losers. The biggest <laughs> losers. Bring them to me. And if you don't, well, then you must be the biggest loser. And so he basically goes around and, like, the first thing he does is he finds, like, one guy who was, like, a serial rapist or whatever. And he's like, I, I guess this guy fits the bill, sends, a- sends him her way. And then suddenly it's like this man has been, like, brutally murdered. And, she- and she's like, thanks, I'll see you next week. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it was really, because it basically two volumes uh, slammed in one. Uh, the first volume, the first half of it, is this really good suspense horror mystery kind of thing. And then by the second half, when it actually tries to, you know, bring a conclusion and answers to some of the stuff, that's where it kind of loses a lot of steam. But it's still a pretty good one. I would recommend it. Yeah, yeah, I could look into that. It's 
kind of weird. So it's like, is she like a zombie in a way, or is she like just some like normal looking? Like, it's not explained entity? until later on. Okay. So. No spoilers then. Yeah, no spoily boys. I also hate it when mangas they're like really good all the way through, but there's only like one or two of them. Mm-hmm. True. Like the Voynich. Yeah, the Voynich Hotel was really good. Uh, same thing for Witch House, or Witch's House. Yeah, but the thing about that one is that it's based on an old RPG Maker game. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of those out now. Um, I remember I, I played that one. It was actually very popular once upon a time, but um, it was it was pretty good. It was enjoyable, and they released a manga of it. I remember there was one I, uh, I had read the first volume of that was also based on a game like that called Angels of Death. And I, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of interested in this. And then by the end of the first volume, it just kind of killed my interest in it. Because the point was like a girl lost in a place being chased by... Basically, she has to go through different floors of a mysterious building. And on each floor, there's a different kind of, you know, varying levels of insane killer. And she basically teams up with the first one. Because she basically... Cause she has no memories, but then she kind of gets back some of her memories and basically realizes that she has no real will to live. So the serial what? killer gets, like, very uninterested in her. It's like, I only kill people if they actually fear death. This is fucking lame. <laughs> uh, and so she's like, all right, I guess. Well, let's get out of here. I don't know. Maybe I'll find a will to live. Then you can fucking kill me. And if this sounds very unappealing, yeah, that was my thought as well. Yeah, definitely. It sounds pretty bad it was just it was it was i could not continue past the first one i wish i had that capability there's a few mangas on that shelf that i wanted to just end at the first one but i say okay maybe it'll get better with the next one or maybe it'll get better with the next one and then it never gets better you see and then i'm finished the series i'm like that was disappointing the whole fucking way through (laughs) i have i tend to stop with things but when i it's easier to stop with them now because I've just got so many things, you know. If I if I if there's one I don't like, when I'm going and picking up more, I can easily just say, "Well, I don't need to get this one because I've got tons of other series that I could be continuing." True. But um, I remember way back when, uh, you know, my first kind of mangas, you know, shit like my first mangas were like Death Note, Berserk, Helsing, and one of them was Gantz. And the first volume of Gantz, I read it, and I'm kind of like, eh, it's, it's, I'm kind of interested, but it's also like, I'm not sure if I really want to continue with this. But because I didn't have a whole lot of series I was reading at the time, I did continue it, and that wound up being one that I did actually finish and enjoy. Okay. So it, it's kind of one of those rare scenarios where it's like, it actually is worth it to continue. But it, it's always such an ordeal to actually get to that point, because... You know, manga is not exactly cheap. Yeah, so. unless you're just reading it online, right? Yeah, I don't like reading it online. Just because translation's different and stuff too. Translation right? is different. I always find it a pain. Like I remember looking up stuff of Made in Abyss online, and uh, it slight inconsistencies bug me. So in the official English translation of the physical releases, they call the uh, White Whistles the Sovereigns, the Sovereign of Dawn, yeah. Sovereign of uh, well, uh, yeah. Immovable Sovereign. But uh, in, you know, other translations online, they call them, like, the lords of whatever, Mm -hmm. and it bugs me for some reason. (laughs) At least it's only little things like that, because I... There was a time that I actually did watch anime. Now it's just moved on to manga, because it's, it's a lot easier for me. I don't have to sit down for a consistent 20 minutes to finish an episode i can just pick it up and read it however long i want to Mm -hmm. but anyway i didn't really like watching uh subbed because i found it harder to like look up at the screen and look down at the. yeah uh, some people have that problem yeah like i can't watch anime like full screen because it's like i'm trying to like watch it's too big of a screen yeah and then it's like i'm trying to like look at the bottom of the screen the whole time and it's just like looking left and right and just trying to like gather all this information at once and then like two seconds later it's just like another paragraph of text on the screen that you have to read mm-hmm. but netflix is bad for dubs <laughs> i can't stand fucking dubs after like i i watched like naruto shippuden up until like a certain point where they haven't like released dubs for it yet and then that was like when i first started watching like sub japanese sub stuff mm-hmm. 
And then, like, as soon as I finished that series or whatever, it's just, like, I, I couldn't go back. Like, I just hate yeah. the voice acting for, like, English dubs. It's so there, bad. There are some animes where I think the dub was actually good. There are precious few where I think it's better, but I remember with uh, one old series I was watching, I uh, I watched, like, the first episode in, um, in subs, because I always do. But then uh, I guess I wound up on the second episode in dub, so I'm like, I guess I'll see what it's like. And the main character just sounded dead inside, and I'm like, <sighs> Were you talking about this one when we were at camping? Or was, am I thinking of a different one that you watched? I'm talking about, uh, Is This a Zombie? Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, the classic. <laughs> this was, That's how you know this was so long ago. Oh, I love that show. Yeah, it was a good one. Like, I had uh, an instance of that with, like, Dragon Ball Z... Because, like, if you listen to the Japanese version of, like, Goku mm -hmm. versus, like, the English dub version, it's, like, Goku just sounds like this, like, weird, like... It's me, Goku! Like, smoker hey, me, lady Goku. or something like that. Like, Japanese, like, lady and... I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah, it grows just, on you, but, like, I don't know. It's it, strange to have that, uh, that disconnect with it. Although, one thing I really love is... There was one old one I watched, um, Descendants of Darkness, I think it was, but there is just one bit in it where the characters who are, you know, they're, they're Japanese, anime, and they go on an American cruise, an American cruise liner, and there's a bit where the main dude is, like, uh, he's, like, cornered by a bunch of, like, English-speaking dudes, and they're actually just speaking really proper English, because they are actual English-speaking voice actors, yeah. and they, and it's, I was watching it subbed, so along the bottom, you see Japanese subtitles, because <laughs> they're English. Yeah. And and it, it was really weird because you've just got these English people, and then um, and then the villain comes in because it's like a weird kind of rivalry villains. Like he's the bad guy, but also he's got a thing for the main dude. Yeah. Uh, and he starts speaking perfect English as well, and you're like, this is a different voice actor. <laughs> uh, the one that I watched on Netflix was devil is a part-timer it was that a dubbed one yeah it was a dubbed oh, no. one by netflix and they they released it back when the b movie was a meme and oh, they no. started because i watched the same episode twice once in subbed and once in dubbed completely fucking different yeah i bet because in the one they were talking about like the logistics and like all the all the proper things that you would in a fight and then in the dubbed one they were talking about the fucking b movie <laughs> 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 Thanks, Netflix. Real cool. Shows you how much, like, influence, like, social media stuff has on, like, Western culture, I guess. I mm -hmm. It really do. That's why I refuse to watch Neon Genesis on Netflix as well, because I heard all the stuff that they got wrong in it with oh. the, uh, not only the, the subbed, but also the dubbed. They didn't buy the rights to Fly Me to the Moon as well. <laughs> so they just... Tragic. A lot of people off. It pissed me off, and I haven't even seen the anime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of wacky dub stuff you can get. So I always preferred subs. Mm -hmm. I've never had a whole lot of problem with reading, uh, reading it and watching the screen. The only time I ever have a problem with it is when it's also got like a bunch of Japanese writing on the walls and shit. That and is they translated. Yeah, that. and then they just got a translation. There's like that, and then when there's like two characters talking over each other in like uh, certain scenes. Yeah, yeah and, and then there's, there's like text on who's the bottom who? and the top. And I hate it when it's on the bottom and the top. I usually like it when they just when put a dash just... and then have them right on top of each other. Okay. Yeah. And I remember um. The one like the first anime I ever properly watched, uh, Panny Pony, they uh, it always took place in classrooms. So whenever there was uh, whenever there was in a classroom on the board, yeah, it, it would have friends. something. It would have some kind of joke written there. Okay. And every time it the scene changed from there and went back, even if it was technically the same scene, they would completely change what was on it. <laughs> yeah. And so you'd have to read just everything. Well, you didn't have to, but you could. Yeah, I mean, it's like and a little... Worse. It's there. I gotta read it. Yeah, I'm always that guy who will, like, pause it at certain parts if there's, like, too much to read. And, like, yeah, time and that, they that makes watching the episode take so much longer as well. It if does. They yeah, if you're, lot. like, doing that stuff, for sure. Such a pain. Of course... Manga's also got that issue sometimes because they'll have um, just in the uh, 
in the white space between panels or on the bottom of the page or on the side of the page or whatever, they'll have just a translation note. But uh, sometimes they put it right in the crevice uh, where the where the crease where the pages is. So you gotta like try to open the book as much as you can, get the light in there so you can actually see what it says in its small little text, and hope you don't snap the spine wide open. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to think of one that did that a lot. Well, that had the spine stuff. Yeah, there are various ones. I think uh, I think Helsing did that a fair few times. I want to say Tokyo Ghoul might have done that once or twice. If I remember. It probably did. Yeah, that one had a fair few signs and shit that would be written out. Signs and sound effects. And my, I also <laughs> my fucking dog. <laughs> fucking dog, go up there and shoot it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, if you read uh, old manga, things like Blade of the Immortal and all that. Oh yeah. Rather than they'll because they'll they'll preserve the, you know, the symbols that show like a sound effect or whatever, and uh, rather than translate them like right there on the spot, which a lot of them do. Um, and yeah, instead of translating on the spot, they'll just have a glossary at the back with all of the sound effects and what they mean. And so I find it really funny to you finish it and you don't you don't pay much attention to it. Like you see some dudes having a sword fight or whatever, you see a big symbol appear. You just like, presume that means like clang yeah, or, or right. slash or whoosh or fucking menacing because you're a JoJo piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, but then you go you don't think about it and then you go to the back and you see this huge glossary. And it's like ah yes, let me look up the symbol and find what clang means. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I've ever actually seen that in a manga. Yeah, you gotta get the old ones for that one. Okay. I really <laughs> like some of process. the uh, some of the fighting sound effects. I think Thrarsh was one of my <laughs> favorite ones, as well as Gung 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 Gung. I think that that was from from Gyo when the shark rammed oh, into the, the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really from a manga, but like this was memed a lot. Was like the the new I think it was like 2017 Berserk stuff that was like CGI. Oh my god! Oh. And then just like guts like hitting stuff like like oh metal where it on just makes the metal clang. And it always clanged no matter what he hit. Like it would just fucking clang like yeah, metal on Yeah, because there metal. was the fucking. Did you even fucking try? <laughs> the first fucking episode of that, he's clanging through skeletons. So then they just get the fucking... They just take that sound effect and make a video where everything he hits does a clang. And I remember one, he's clanging through skeletons. He puts it on his back and it clangs. The, he's fighting a giant tree. Clang, clang, clang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I hate, I hate the, the fucking 2017 Berserk, but the clang memes were pretty, pretty good. They were good. It's a shame that they ruined that freaking. Well. Uh, honestly, I take comfort in the fact that it's not ruined because the original property still exists and True. is as good as it always was. It's just, you know, for those... Because some people do not read manga, and I I get that. You know, I don't watch anime, so there are some animes that don't have mangas that I don't experience. Yeah. It's all it's all the same, so it's not like I'm going to be some manga elitist, but at the same time, you know, uh, it's it's real rough for those anime viewers who are like, finally, I can experience Berserk! <laughs> and then suddenly they get fucking clanged in their hopes and dreams. Yeah. They get slapped with the, the Golden Age arc three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When will there be more? <laughs> Good one. Uh, maybe after. After Mira passes, <laughs> uh. I'll I will ever only ever trust Studio Madhouse to make Berserk. Otherwise, I'm not gonna watch it. Yeah, Madhouse would be pretty honestly, good. Unless you're like really craving the animation, no. Like that, like that's I sat through and watched the whole thing because I was like, yeah, I might as well see or like enjoy this. Maybe it like does have something but... to offer. I mean, I find with Berserk specifically, just because of the raw art. And the fact that even the action scenes, they don't really need that much animation to them. Yeah. It's it's more so a strength in just the raw art and detail he puts into it. So I feel while obviously animating it, it can look nice if you actually do it right, it's going to be difficult and, and it's, it's not like a necessary. longer process and yeah. more expensive, right, than just like paying a few guys at a computer to just... Yeah, and I mean, Berserk is so fucking long. If they actually were to make a proper anime to cover the rest of it, they'd probably have to wait till after it's finished, if it ever finishes. Fuck, it's gonna take years because they go on hiatus. Like they yeah. do, they like release 
two chapters a year, and then it's like hiatus. Yeah, there he goes. So I'll have to play more Idol Master. <laughs> He's getting up there in age too, isn't he? He's his health is not good. Oh boy. <laughs> It is an actual possibility that he could die before he finishes it. I hope Hopefully he does. It's just like you know, like stashed away, like at his house. Like he uh, has it all kind of like planned out, but yeah, yeah. you never know. You you definitely notice a difference in the art, though. Oh yeah, probably. It's just so fucking good, though. <laughs> yeah, but hope and a dream. Hope it works and dream that it might <laughs> before it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, That's one thing I'll be optimistic about, is Berserk actually finishing. And hopefully with happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> he's said before, people have asked him about um, what he's thinking for an ending, and he's said uh, he said in interviews, like, I think after everything, Guts deserves a happy ending. Deserves. <laughs> Will he get it, though? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> he deserves a happy ending. Will he get one? <laughs> I mean, perhaps the only happy ending is to be ended. <laughs> Like, I don't know how, like, caught up you are with it, but, like, I they're really... I am completely yeah, up to date. So that you, so you, not. Yeah, so you know they're, like, feeding around the bush at the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I've actually read up to the most recent chapters that have not been physically released yet. Okay. So, yeah. things are... I know how it is, and I know generally how things are, but, you know, hoping. Hoping real hard! Yeah, because, uh, depending on how they take it, it could... I don't want to say ruin, but it'll, it'll it'll be interesting, I guess, we'll say. Yeah, there are multiple paths they could take. I'm not sure which is the one I would prefer. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah. We'll wait fucking forever. Did you ever start reading Dead Dead Demons? I have not resumed reading it. I just haven't seen the volumes around yet. Because I, really? uh, cause I, I went recently to get some more... And Are you trying to avoid your heart being broken by Eno Asona again? <sighs> Look, man, maybe unconsciously. Maybe I just created a block. I just can't see it. He's already destroyed my life three times over. Yeah, sick as bastard. <laughs> Fucking Eno Asano. What, just sad, sad mangas? Or? He's the one that did good night pun pun. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. He's the pun pun man. Yeah. The pun pun man, the no fun fun man. <laughs> he also did one called dead dead demons where essentially tokyo it has a giant mothership filled with aliens hovering over it and it's been there for like three years at this point and like it keeps sending ships down filled with aliens and they aren't really doing anything that's like district nine i think uh, yeah, it is it yeah. is a lot like yeah, district nine actually. and they keep shooting down the ships and they they keep crashing into buildings and killing a lot of people after they get shot down and they're like these aliens are a fucking menace <laughs> And, like, some of them will survive the crash, so they'll be living in, like, restricted areas in the city. And then, like, they'll send the military in there just to fucking <laughs> annihilate them all when they're just trying to survive and stuff. But all the while, you're being shown, like, the perspective of, like, a bunch of cute girls that are just going through school and stuff. And it's it's kind of... That's really weird. I view it as kind of a metaphor to, like... He's really good at putting you in your own shoes, but in a different perspective. Because... You're looking at the life of these girls, but all the while in the background and There's like on like their phones, all this crazy shit yeah, they're seeing like they're yeah. seeing um, like news articles of like more aliens shot dead in the streets today. God bless them. God bless Japan. Like Japan yeah. And like they're they're looking at other articles like oh the the new anime or something came out or like this new video game's out and it's just them having a good time, but fairly soon into the story one of their friends dies in a alien in, crash or something yeah and that was definitely a turning point in in the manga because you start to see some of them thinking differently but eventually it just goes back to them just kind of pretending that nothing's wrong in the world okay yeah I get, that's pretty relatable honestly mm-hmm Hmm. Yeah. It's fucked up. <laughs> I've been to be fair I've been reading a, a lot more uh, more less horribly fucked up manga, you know. Recently got uh, I th I might actually be caught up with Overlord. Overlord. I have I just watched like the two seasons. I want to read it cuz fuck waiting for the I have movie. no idea what the anime is actually cover. <laughs> 20 minutes of lizard sex. <laughs> Oh, that was... I fucking hated that. that was I have passed the lizard sex arc. 
Uh, the season two ended when he claimed that he went to war with the uh, the one like major kingdom, not like the the Roman type one. I, I forget which one was which. Okay, I there was like that far. Okay. Does then, he fight Gilliman in it? <laughs> <laughs> no. The and ultra fucking nerd. <laughs> the arc I'm on is the one with uh with Sebastian. Where where he's uh, undercover in a city and there's kind of like the whole slave ring. Ah, okay, yeah. So you're you're kind of catching up to okay. like where the anime ended. It's it's pretty close, honestly. Solid. I have so far to catch up on with the manga. I'm only on like the second yeah, one. I can see the stacks. I wish I had that many stacks. I wish I didn't. Do you know how much shit up there that I wish I didn't have? <laughs> <laughs> Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> okay, so let me break it down. All the ones that are on the shelves, those are ones that I've read. All the ones on the very top, I need to read those. Oh, God. You see that slightly smaller stack? That, yeah, yeah. That's the one that I'm on now. Oh, man. And there's piles behind it, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's that smaller kind of shelf behind you, that's all the Warhammer books that I have to read. Oh, my God. Holy, He's got a lot of reading Primark material. Stuff. Yeah, I have every single Primark book, except for the Mortarian one. Holy shit. Really? All 20? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was, I, I had a, like, just moment of perspective of, like, what the fuck is my life back at the Comic-Con thing? Because we mentioned that we had done a, um, a, uh, a, a anime fan furry science fucking survey or whatever. One of the questions it asked was, how long have you been an anime fan? And I had to sit there and say, Jesus Christ, I've been an anime fan for probably nine plus years. And I've just been collecting manga the entire time. Here's a question. What was, like, your first experience with, like, anime growing up? Actually, when I was really young, I remember my, um, my, my dad had brought home a, um, he had brought home one of the Naruto mangas. I don't know why he got it. He just had it, and he's like, hey, here's a, here's a, here's a funky comic. And I'm like, whoa. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's like Asian. You read it backwards. I'm like, that makes no sense. But I had, I still have that manga. It's really Holy, old. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I read the first volume of Naruto. Um, it was pretty whack. And then eventually I kind of watched, like, a few episodes of Naruto, but I didn't really stick with it. Yeah. And then it was only, like, it was only, like, around grade six or so that, uh, that I really got into anime where I actually sat down, like, this is an anime, I'm going to watch it from start to finish. And then that cascaded into me watching a lot more shit. Gotcha. And so technically my first experience was, you know, Naruto, as it is with a lot of people. Yeah. But my first real, genuine experience was um, cutesy comedy moe anime. Can't say I've heard of that one. Those are it's just pretty a bunch generic. Of descri- <laughs> Those are a bunch of descriptive terms. The, the first one that I... Well, the first experience that I had with anime in general was because of this fucker. You're welcome. Um, we already told the story on the podcast where I, I went up and sat beside him, and I was like, oh, what, what book is that? Why is it backwards? And he said, oh, this is Gunslinger Girl, and looked very disinterested because he thought that I was going to make fun of him. Yeah, as people do. And then I started talking to Connor and Tyler more, and then we started hanging out more. And you guys recommended, um, Is This a Zombie? The first technical anime that I watched was Sword Art Online, but the first one that I enjoyed was Is This a Zombie? And then after that, my life's been hell. Yeah, <laughs> as, it, as it do. Yeah, like, I, I think, you know, it's just like watching late night cartoons or whatever, yeah. just like chilling. And then I think it was on like YTV back in the day, they'd always play like dubbed anime or something. Yeah. After, like, 8 p.m. or something like that. Wait, would Pokemon count? Ye- technically, yeah, technically, yeah. Okay, then the first people one would be Pokemon. Argue, people argue about that a lot. I don't tend to bother thinking about it because I didn't watch a whole lot of Pokemon anyway, but I just try to avoid the complication of it. Yeah, Because I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. I saw some of the movies... I never really watched much of the show. Yeah, I, 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 same boat as you, Eric. Like, I've seen the movies. I vaguely remember, like, the ones with, like, the really old ones with, like, the legendary dogs or whatever. Like, the... I, don't, I can't fucking... Actually, I think I still own old, uh, old Pokemon manga. 
<laughs> oh really from way back when they toned it down for the american side i remember there was a there was a youtube video about that oh are you talking about the breast scene the miss or the, yeah. the bikini contest or whatever yeah. and james has like big inflatable breasts or something like that i think so yeah I've, rem- I've seen that scene okay. cut on like YouTube. In old uh, Pokemon mangas and stuff, there was like one thing where there was like, I think it was May or whatever, and she had like breast envy or something like that. Because they were in like a spa or something. <laughs> that, that's like such a. That's such a fucking generic thing. Yeah, I'm so tired of seeing it. Every fucking. Like, I'm surrounded by titties jump. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for plot. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, every fucking anime, I swear, has, like, that trope in it where it's like, oh, I'm so, like, embarrassed. My breasts are smaller than, like, my friends or some shit. Right? <laughs> like, I, I actually find it funny to think about those things. Have you ever, like, con- just considered, like, what tropes in American media there is that a Japanese person might have or just any other culture might have? That where it's similar to how we feel about weird Japanese tropes? <laughs> Brands. <laughs> <laughs> product placement in movies well it's like I sit there I'm like how many American movies have this exact thing you're kind of a you're kind you're not you're not a very talented or capable dude uh, you work up and become stronger and then by the end you win the affections of a strong a strong action girl who who kicks your ass at the beginning yeah Mark Wahlberg lovingly sipping a Bud Light in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> there's, like, shit like that. Like, all those Transformer movies are just, like, long ads, right? Like, there's, like, the cars. Yeah. And then I think it was, like, the second movie where they run around the city with, like, the spark or whatever. And then, like, the Mountain Dew machine comes alive. The fucking Xbox 360 becomes alive and shit. And it's just, like... All Every time I like think obvious brand placement, yeah. like they could have slightly turned them to just make it a nondescript. <laughs> Nothing is worse though than fucking Mark Wahlberg drinking that Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! With oh, a Coca Cola fucking jumbo screen in the background. <laughs> yeah. Every time I think of like Transformers and things come into life, I just think of the one Panty and Stocking episode. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Panty and Stalking, Conrad? No, I don't think so. I highly recommend it. It's fucking hilarious. That's one of the ones where I actually recommend the It's dub. a Japanese anime made for Americans. It is. It specifically takes inspiration from American uh, animation media. And it is. It's basically entire thing is that is very vulgar humor. Panty and Stalking. With yes. garter belt. With garter belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that's hard to sell to the wrong type of person. <laughs> but it's I bought into it great. pretty quickly. It was fucking hilarious. I think, well, that was like the fourth one that I watched. Yeah, it must have been early on. I, Which need, to go and re- I need to go and rewatch that. I do too. I have the box set for it, and I got halfway through it, and I'm like, yeah, and then I forgot about it. <laughs> I I still have, uh, I've still got the Blu-ray, but I... Uh... I have yet to watch through it. Yeah. But that's one of the ones. It's... it's uh, And it does not have a manga. It does yeah, have a manga, it but it doesn't like have a manga. slight, just side shit, non-canon stuff made by an extra artist. But it is, uh, it is a great one. Highly recommend it. Watch the dub, because it's one of those rare cases where the dub is actually better. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, the point was, there's one episode that is an enti- entirely a Transformers reference. <laughs> basically transformer aliens come and they're like at war or whatever and so the optimus prime and megatron equivalents are like warring or whatever but i guess their uh their power core or whatever looks like a, a candy and since one of them has a thing for sweets she eats it and becomes a transformer <laughs> and then the um uh, then uh, the other one her sister eats it eats the other one becomes a a transformer and they go to war themselves and so they sit there in their own rooms and everything turns into a transformer <laughs> that, yeah that seems pretty interesting I oh think. my fuck bought 5000 turned into a transformer it's trying to fuck me <laughs> <laughs> yeah they uh the point is that the main characters are uh they're they're horror drenched in sin one of them is all about lust that's panty and so you see in her room everything's turning into a transformer so you see like vibrators and oh, shit no. they just grow legs <laughs> one um, thing i will say don't watch the end credit scene of the uh, last the episode after credit scene oh, no. it will ruin the entire show for you don't do it 
Should I even ask what it is? No. No. Because <laughs> I'm just going to be curious enough to see it for myself. Watch at your own risk. Watch at your own risk. Just know you will never be satisfied after it. <laughs> just like with the podcast. And like that, it is time for us to come to a close. Thank An you for listening. An unsatisfactory close. Yes, absolutely. Like always. <laughs> this has been your host, Eric. It's been me, Kyle. And uh, the lovely guest, Conrad. Thank you for coming. Yeah, no problem. (laughs) It's a pleasure to be here. That makes me feel good. Good night, everyone. Good vibration.